Most of you will know what this is, and I thought I'd review it. Uh, I did an old review on this, but it was pretty, pretty, pretty rubbish. Uh, because I kept referring to it to it as the Mickey Mouse gas mask and some of their uh, inaccuracies. Because I did not know its true name uh, back then. And this is my most mint example of a Mickey Mouse gas mask out of the four I own. Uh, this is my most mint condition and my favourite, so I do, like, I, I, I do look after everything, but, you know, I do really praise this particular one, uh, because it is my favourite out of all of them. Moving the box closer, we have instructions, which says, this special respirator for a small child is government property, any person who has it in his possession is responsible in law for using care to keep it in good condition it is to be re it is to be returned to the local authority in whose area the possessor may be at any time either on request or when no longer required and that's what it reads on the instructions and i'll bring the camera down a little bit zoom in a bit so if you wish you can pause there and read it yourself um, or you can pause there and read it. But regardless of that, it has a name on there. So it has been issued. It is not an unissued example, although the mask certainly looks like an unissued example. It has a name on there, which I realised again. Uh, so perhaps um, someone up in Scotland had this. Reason being, it was sold to me from scotland antiques possibly it's, uh, if this is a gaelic name or i can't read it but whatever it could be someone from scotland uh so that's pretty cool as you can see uh there's been some water marks causing damage along the box still a very solid example though um you have one cut out there one cut out there for a a carrying string which you can see is threaded through. The staples are in relatively good condition and so forth. So what we're going to do is, or what I'm going to do, is open up the box and show you the instructions on the other side. Yes, it is a double-sided instructions. So it goes on to say, packaging of respirator. Number one, the respirator should be placed in box with heavy end container standing on bottom of box. Number two, care must be taken to see that expiratory outlet valve lies flat against the side of the box without any deformation. When respirator is required for use, number one, hold respirator by the harness. Number two, put on first, uh, put on by first putting chin into face piece, then draw the head harness over the head join three parts of the harness by hook and eye provided number three take off by pulling the harness over the head from the back do not take your respirator off by pulling the container upwards over the face if you wish to pause there go ahead and read it yourself all right <clears throat> so let me align the box with the camera we have these two windows, just like on the normal civilian respirator boxes. These two flaps, and here we have the mask. I'll remove the mask, show you the inside of the box. As you can see, there isn't anything like a cutout, like the uh, British masks had. Although I think the British masks, they could have made a similar size box <laughs> to cut down on cardboard, because... They are relatively the same size uh, of um, the Mickey Mouse gas masks. They just they just get smaller or a little bit bigger. 
and a general thrilling respirator would probably fit in, fit in there. Um, regardless, you can see the it's been threaded through the two straps or the um, cord. Put the box to one side. We bring in in the mask. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit dirty, but it's old. It's 80 odd years old. Um, these are really cute, and the Mickey Mouse gas masks. You've got the filter on there. These are somewhat removable, apparently, but all four of mine are stuck tight and I can't remove them. On here you have... 1942 on the expiratory outlet valve or if you wish the exhale or flapper valve as I usually call them You've got the two eye pieces. I think they're celluloid with metal rims You've got the harness Show you the back of the harness And then you've got the hook which is that here And then you've got the eye hook and eye provided like that. Unfortunately, it's missing its uh, intake valve. Regardless, it's still a nice piece. And you won't be able to see this on camera. Or you might. But it's Leyland and Birmingham rubber. Uh, has some more information on there. And it's 1942 dated, so that's pretty cool. So, let me set these two aside, and we'll talk about the history of the Mickey Mouse gas mask, which will be fun. Let's just zoom out a little bit. That's good. So, I'm just going to get the history up, and we'll talk about that. See you in a minute. The General Civilian Respirator Mark III, or commonly known as the Mickey Mouse Gas Mask, was a gas mask made for children during the Second World War from the age of 2 to 5 years old. The gas mask was produced in colourful colours, which was red and blue, though there is a rare Canadian variant, which was black with blue eye frames, and then there is a rare black variant, hence why it has black eye frames, which I happen to own. This one you see is the most common type of Mickey Mouse gas mask you can find on the market today, though the prices of these are somewhat escalating. The gas mask features a basic inhale and exhale flapper valve, similar to most gas masks of that time period. These gas masks usually came in a cardboard box. Funnily enough, some children would annoy their parents by blowing silly noises through the gas mask. Dated 1942 and made by Leyland and Birmingham Rubber. Thank you for watching, I do hope you enjoyed the video, hopefully it wasn't as long as most of my videos, I do try, or I am starting to try and cut them down, uh, and not talk as much as I usually do, but that's all the information I have to cover on this particular uh, respirator of Mickey Mouse gas mask, and yes, its real name is the General Civilian Respirator Mark III. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, take care now, and bye bye, see you in the next one.